Good evening. We want to welcome you this evening on our wonderful sunny day. We're so excited about that. It's about time, right? I want to thank Dr. Howe and Lynn Howe for being here with us this evening. He's going to talk about a subject that's important to so many people, blood pressure, and uh, we'll look forward to that. So tonight is our last night for this season. We take the summer off and we'll get started again back in September. Well, I'm delighted too and I were talking about tonight and we thought, you know, it may be such a gorgeous day that no one will come. <laughs> it's been wonderful to be here and to be learning with all of you about uh, ways that we can eat that will really be good for us. And um, as Tim and I have been working on this for the last how many years? 20? 25. 25 years. It's been a wonderful journey for us and you know we'll continue to learn and um, one thing that I really want to encourage you about is just you're thinking I think sometimes you can think about healthy food and think well I can't have this or I can't have that and then like oh sad but you know instead of looking at it that way you think no you know I'm going to put cucumbers in my soup or whatever you know think of like I'm gonna feel really good about my food because I'm putting all these good things in I kind of on faith wow. chose the recipes for tonight hoping that it would be summertime because these are some recipes that I particularly have enjoyed in the summertime they're cool they don't have to be heated and they are fresh and they're quick and they utilize things from the garden so I'm going to start off with a cucumber gazpacho. And to make this, you don't have to chop up the cucumbers this finely. Um, I did just because I had some extra time. <laughs> but you know, basically just you want the, blend, the cucumbers to blend well. You so, can just throw a, a half a cucumber in. Yeah. It'll work fine. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's what I do. <laughs> so here's, and you know, you never, Tim, we have kind of an ongoing thing that happens at our house about not being hostage to recipes. So this calls for two medium uh, cucumbers, but I had two large cucumbers because that's what Bow Street Market had. So, you know, you have to kind of utilize whether it's from the market or from your garden what it is you have available so have our cucumbers here's the celery here are the avocados and I put the avocado the lemon juice in with the avocados so the avocados wouldn't turn a nasty shade of brown And here's the water. And the dill. And, and, and we'll add. So this is dill, fresh dill. And I put the dill and I added the salt so I could assemble everything really easily. And I would say with dill, you know, if you really enjoy dill, add more dill. I, I love dill, so I, I'm always generous with my dill. This is clearly more than two tablespoons. <laughs> So that's all, and then you blend it. Yeah. No. One of our friends said, "You can't call what you do cooking schools because it's too simple." <laughs> oh well. Uh, so it's a little simple. Uh, there it is. No. There's a nice piece of dill that didn't get blended. Oh well. I. I just reflected that I, I made somewhat of an error and I want to make sure I make it very clear is that I usually don't add the avocado until everything else is blended because you don't want, you want to blend everything really thoroughly and then add the avocado at the very end. And then what you do is you, I actually, I marinated the onions and the tomatoes, I added this for this batch in here already so that they would be nice and marinated for all of you. So, so it, but if I was doing this from scratch, this is when I would chop up my sweet onion and tomatoes and I would put it in 
and in a couple hours it would be ready to go. But you don't have to wait a couple hours, although I will say the next day it's still really good. <laughs> but if you make it and want to eat it right away, it'll get eaten. <laughs> the thing that's tr this is a sweet onion, but sometimes if the, if the onion has a bit of a bite to it, if it hasn't had the chance to marinate, it'll, it'll, it'll talk to you. So, <laughs> so if you if you enjoy your onion a little calmer, then it's probably a good idea to let it marinate for a while. What I usually do is I'll cut my avocado in half, and then I'll just take a you know take the seed out, and then I take a spoon and I just spoon it out and put it in my blender. And I I usually will only blend it for like eight seconds at the end, so the avocado is just barely blended in. That's that, with, it's fascinating when you're making this, initially when you, when you blend the celery and the cucumbers, it will separate out. And so you'll have, like the top will be a different color than the bottom. But as soon as you blend, briefly blend in the avocado, it holds it all in suspension. And gives it a nice creamy texture. And I'll give you a quick, sheet about your avocado. You'll know it's ready. When you cut it in half, take that seed out. If you'll quarter it, you shouldn't have to scoop it. You can peel the, the peeling right off and throw it in. If you can't peel it, your avocado is not ripe yet. <laughs> okay, any other questions about the cucumber soup? What's in the marinade? Uh, just tomatoes and you, sweet onions. Just those two? No, they just, can. no. I just all I did was I added those two, yes. the onions and the tomatoes, to the cucumber soup after it was mixed. Yeah. And then just let it, I, I kept this in my refrigerator this afternoon. It's that's, a soup. That's a cool soup a that cool you soup. could drink if you want, but you'll have to chew the tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Question yeah. in the back. Uh, that would be for four to have a bowl. I would say it's just right for Lynn and I. <laughs> I would say four to six, so four to six, but just depending on if you, this is going to be your main course, in which case you might want more than one bowl, or if it's just going to be a, a kind of an a accessory on your menu. How long will it stay fresh? Not long in our house. <laughs> I think it definitely is nice the next day. I've never had any last any longer than that. It gets eaten. I think the tomatoes would be the only question I would have. You know, if the tomatoes at some point will, you know, do what tomatoes do. Right. It does stay pretty well because of that acid. Yeah. yeah. And the lemon juice. Yeah. This is a, a soup, you know, with this soup, it's a wonderful, just like with bread or pitas and a salad, you have a, a wonderful, complete meal for a summer evening. And I've served it to a lot of guests. And they've always been happy. So. so this is, the next one is a basil pistachio pesto. When Tim and I started taking all processed oils out of our cooking, one of the things I was the most sad about was pesto. Because I thought, how in the world can I make delicious pesto without olive oil? Because my, all of my pesto recipes used at least half a cup of olive oil. So that was kind of a depressing um, thought, but as we've experimented with it, we've learned that utilizing avocados and nuts, that actually you can make fabulous pesto. So don't be sad, be happy. So with a, this, you can make a, a wonderful avocado basil pesto without pistachios, but I found this in an Italian vegan cookbook. And the pistachios give it a real added kick, a, a really wonderful added flavor. So if you're wanting to have a extra special topping or you know, if you're serving guests and you want something special, this is something wonderful to have. Yes? Are the pistachios salty or unsalted? No, they are unsalted and they are not roasted. And remember that if you buy them in the shell, it takes a while. <laughs> it takes a while. 
I got home and there was a nice big bowl of pistachio shells. And Lynn had listened to a uh, TED, TED talk. talk while she was doing the pistachios. So uh, it takes a while. You can buy them shelled. Uh, that's fine too. But unsalted, non, not roasted. I, I try my best to um, have our food be as unoxidized as possible. And that's why I go to the extra trouble of using the whole, you know, shelling it myself. I just feel like at least I'm doing my best to have an unoxidized product. But okay. The, what's behind that comment is nuts in a shell stay good longer than nuts that are shelled. Once nuts are shelled, they should be either vacuum packed or put in the freezer or in, at least in a refrigerator so that they don't oxidize, so that they don't glycate for those of you who were at previous lectures. So I, I got my pistachios that I did while I was listening to the good TED Talks and my avocado and my salt and my lemon juice and it's all right here. Now all the salt that we use tonight is sea salt and I'll talk a little bit about why sea salt. Uh, one of my good friends came up to me recently and said, did you know that sea salt has a lot of plastic in it? Well, of course, there is plastic in seawater, and there is even more plastic in fish now because we have a lot of plastics in our, plastic in our ocean. And there is some plastic even in sea salt. This is sea salt from the, not the coast of Maine, but actually the North Atlantic quite a ways from shore, but there's still plastic in just about everything. And you want to minimize plastic if you, rem I think it was the last lecture I gave about BPA and BPS and BPF and phthalates, but you know we live in the world, we haven't found that other planet yet, and you do the best you can, and sea salt, there are some really positive things as we'll talk about. And you don't want to worry about your food. You do your best and you think happy thoughts. Okay, so here's my basil. Now are your plastic or glass? They unfortunately are plastic. Great question. No, put it on a little more. So the question was about plastic. And is this BPA free? Yes. Does that mean it's free of all BP products? No. And they're all active. And glass would be better, and if someone finds me one, I'll use it. That's good. There you go. And what you don't want to do is heat plastic. That's when the, the bisphenols are really released, is heated plastic. So when you buy that case of bottled water and you put it in your car and park your car out in the sun, not a good idea. So in this recipe, you mix the ingredients I showed and then you take your, your second avocado and you mash it separately. It gives it a little more texture. If the whole entire thing would be blended, it, I'm, this is pretty good Cheryl, but it's not perfect. Actually, <laughs> so we, what I'll do is I'll mash it and then we will add it to, so then I, um, the only other thing I You do, can peel it or you can do it with a spoon. I like it that way because it's faster. So then you chop six green onions and some tomatoes and, and you're good. Hopefully you were good before you chopped them. <laughs> I have a question about what you used the food processor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you use the Vitamix? Uh, you could, but it works better because of the thickness to use a food processor. Yeah. At home, of course, I would have a separate bowl to mix this all together. This works just fine. So now we'll just mix this in with what I already had done. It's very simple again. 
And the nice thing is since it's simple, if you don't like it, you haven't wasted a lot of time. <laughs> so we're talking about high blood pressure tonight and one of the reasons why we chose this is because there's a lot of green here. And greens are particularly good at lowering your blood pressure. Avocado is good as we'll talk about because it's one of the highest in potassium and uh, so that's good. There's celery in the soup and celery has a natural diuretic effect uh, and so that's uh, good for blood pressure as well. There is, uh, there is salt in both of these recipes uh, as you'll see and it is sea salt as I mentioned earlier sea salt is uh, a little better because it's a balanced salt. That is, it has potassium, magnesium, manganese, other minerals in it, so the body handles it a little different than just pure sodium chloride, which is what you get if you buy just plain salt at the store. The reason for them uh, going to the trouble of refining the salt is then they can use the potassium and other minerals in other products and give you something that uh, is uh, refined but not better for you. Uh, so if you get a sea salt that's unrefined, it's slightly better for your blood pressure. Does, does that mean that you should, can eat all you want of salt? Unfortunately, no. I was talking to a gentleman recently and he had uh, read somewhere that if you had high blood pressure, the problem was you didn't have enough salt in your diet. And uh, you needed to have more salt if it was sea salt. Or if it was, especially he was big into pink Himalayan salt and it, he was sure that if he just got enough of that his blood pressure would come down and he was actually drinking salt water and uh, I said it would prob probably be better to drink plain water and put your salt on your food because he was complaining that the salt water didn't taste particularly good and uh, you know you don't want to throw your your mind out when you read stuff think about it and you don't want excess salt of any kind, but sea salt, because of the other minerals in it, is slightly better. Question? Uh, Cape Cod uh, chips now advertise sea salt. Wonderful. I'm glad they do. If you just throw out the chips <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pardon? What if you're hypothyroid? Do you need the iodine? Yes. And uh, iodized salt is important for people that are hypothyroid, and, and that's a good point. Um, there is some iodine in sea salt, uh, not a lot. How about kosher salt? Kosher salt is not, um, it's not a, it is a refined salt still. It is somewhat better, but it's still mostly sodium chloride. You, you really need the unrefined salt from, if you look at the salt that we use, it's gray. Uh, and that's because it has other minerals in it. Uh, it's not because it has mud from Casco Bay. <laughs> Although that would be gray too. Yeah, it would be. Question. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> And the interesting thing is there are many different flavors to salts. Uh, one salt that we use quite a bit is black Himalayan salt. And it has sulfur in it. And it smells like eggs. So if you put black Himalayan salt on your, and there's several other locations for this, on your tofu, if people don't know what they're eating, they'll mistake it for egg salad because it smells just like eggs. <clears throat> so that's kind of a fun trick you can do. Oh, this is really good. It's tofu. Oh, I don't like tofu. Well, you said you're, yeah, so.